Meet the Kongs. They're not all related. Oh my god, stop bro, I'm stuck! There are some biological ties between some of the members of this crew like Donkey Kong, Cranky Kong, and DK Jr. But for the most part, the name Kong is meant to identify their species or tribe. Their home is known as Donkey Kong Island, and oftentimes we see territorial disputes between them and other tribes in the area like the Kremlings, the Tiki Tak tribe, and the Snowmats. I've already covered Donkey Kong, Cranky Kong, DK Jr., Diddy Kong, and Dixie Kong in my previous videos, so I'd highly recommend checking those out if you haven't, since I even provide some insight on the whole Cranky being DK's grandfather or father to be. But this video is going to tackle the rest of the Kongs, including some of the weird distant relatives that you probably haven't heard of. By the time we're done, you'll all be official Kongologists. I just made that up. So we'll go in chronological order here, starting with this guy. This is Mini Donkey Kong who appeared in the Game & Watch version of Donkey Kong in 1982. I know some of you are already thinking that this doesn't count, but hear me out. Certain Game & Watch titles came with a built-in alarm function, much like traditional digital watches, but the cool thing is that they each had a specific alarm animation that would trigger whenever the alarm went off. And in the case of the Donkey Kong Game & Watch title, this mini Donkey Kong is seen ringing a bell when that alarm goes off. This little guy predates the creation of Donkey Kong Jr., so we could retroactively say that this is Jr., but I thought this would be cool to start with. Maybe this is DK Jr.'s older brother or sister who gave birth to the current Donkey Kong, as I theorized. Alright, moving on. This random gorilla is Uncle Julius. I have no idea who this is. I said I'd talk about all the Kongs, so here we are. Uncle Julius was a character introduced in the Donkey Kong Jr. segment of the 1983 television series Saturday Supercade. I've covered this TV show in both the Mario Origins and Classic DK video if you want to know a little bit more, but it had segments that were animated versions of popular video games at the time, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. included. Uncle Julius is the uncle of Junior, appearing at the beginning of the episode Gorilla Ghost to tell Junior the story of the Gorilla Ghost. So this episode involves Junior, his friend Bones, and Uncle Julius trying to figure out the true identity of the Gorilla Ghost, but he's never seen again after this episode, leading me to believe he got poached in the jungle somewhere. Next! <clears throat> This is Candy Kong, introduced in Donkey Kong Country as the manager of Candy Save Point. Just as the name suggests, players can go to her spots on the map to save their progress. But Candy here is actually the banana of Donkey Kong's eye. That's literally what the instructions booklet says, both for the original game and the Game Boy Advance remake. Funny enough, it doesn't say she's explicitly DK's girlfriend. Over the years, she's described as Donkey Kong's love interest, but it's not until Donkey Kong 64 where Cranky says in her bio, that darn donkey has all the luck. His girl Candy waits around her hut, always willing to offer her musical help to that undeserving son of mine and his fancy polygonal friends. There's questionable details in this one sentence, but I still need more proof that they're actually a couple. Compared to Diddy and Dixie's relationship, there seems to be a lot of gray area here. Like even her trophy in Smash Brothers Brawl says, Donkey Kong's rumored girlfriend, although nobody is quite sure if the rumor is true. DK is a certified oh, boy. Sensational. Candy early on in development had alternative names like Blondie Kong or Honey Kong, and she was also slated to appear in Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, in some form or fashion, but according to Rare, they thought her inclusion would clash with the new Diddy and Dixie relationship introduced in that game and she was promptly removed. But she plays a much larger role in the Donkey Kong Country television series, where she and DK are officially declared a couple, though her design is completely different from what we see in-game. Candy would also have a minor role in Donkey Kong 64 with this redesign, and she runs Candy's music shop where she can sell the Kong's instruments that can be used in-game to defeat their foes. <clears throat> well, hello, Donkey. You just take it easy and let Candy tell you how she's gonna make you feel real good. Stand a little closer, Donkey, and I'll show you how to use your instrument. How did I miss this as a kid? The last time we'd see Candy aside from the Smash games as a cameo is in Donkey Kong Barrel Blast and DK Jungle Climber way back in 2007, again as a non-playable character. So maybe one day we'll see her play a more prominent role in one of these games. Just as a heads up, most of these characters I'm going to mention have cameos in the Smash Brothers series, so whenever I mention the last time they're featured in a game, I'll more or less be referring to their last appearance in the Donkey Kong franchise and possibly Mario spin-offs. Next! Next up is the coolest Kong of the bunch, Funky Kong, also introduced in Donkey Kong Country as one of DK's friends. 
He's quite the favorite among Donkey Kong fans for his laid-back demeanor and serves as the mechanic on Donkey Kong Island, helping the team within various titles by creating vehicles and inventions that help them on their journey. In Donkey Kong Country, Funky is the proprietor of Funky's Flights. Stop at one of his shops and he can help you travel between worlds that you've already completed within the game. In the Game Boy Advance remake, Funky sets up a fishing minigame that allows DK and Diddy to catch as many fish as possible before the time runs out, and he'll reward them with collectible photographs for the player's scrapbook. He is also one of the more prominent characters in the Donkey Kong Country television series and uh, just see for yourself. Uh, anyone can make the moves, Donkey Dude. Come on, give it another try. This man from 90s, we see Funky mostly play the same role within the series, especially in Donkey Kong Country 3, where throughout the game the player can unlock different vehicles from Funky which helps Dixie and Kitty Kong access new levels. In Donkey Kong 64, Funky decides to go from mechanic to arms dealer, becoming the owner of a weapons store to sell ammo and other upgrades to the Kongs to assist them in their battle against the Kremlings. He'd make minor appearances in the DK spin-off series and some of the Mario spin-off titles like Mario Kart Wii and Mario Super Sluggers, but it wasn't until Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze that we'd see him back in his shop helping out the Kongs by selling them various items for their journey. The Switch re-release of Tropical Freeze even features Funky Kong as a playable character for the very first time in the series. Though his playstyle is mainly for beginner players, it gives him a very versatile skill set to easily traverse these levels. I highly recommend this game by the way. And as for Funky's latest appearance, we see him in a tiny cameo in the Super Mario Bros. movie driving his cart in the background. Alright, so here's a fun one. Donkey Kong Land was more or less the Game Boy rendition of Donkey Kong Country, but in my opinion it can stand on its own as a different experience. It was released around the same time as Donkey Kong Country, so while there weren't any exclusive Kongs within this handheld title, there were unused enemies, animal friends, and this mysterious Kong that got scrapped from the final product. This particular Kong is unnamed, but was part of a Donkey Kong Land preview printed in Nintendo Power Volume 69 back in February 1995. And this wasn't a minor feature either, he takes up about a quarter of these two pages, so it's interesting we'd never see this guy in any of the handheld games. But leave your theories in the comments. All senior citizens should have life alert. Wrinkly Kong, the wife of Cranky Kong, debuting in Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, as the new manager of the save points. She runs the Kong College and can provide Diddy and Dixie with some hints to help them on their quest. In Donkey Kong Country 3, Wrinkly officially retires from her teaching job at Kong College and moves to her save cave where the player can once again visit her to save their progress. It's also here where Diddy and Dixie return the banana birds they rescued during their journey, which helps get the true ending of the game. One cool thing about Wrinkly here is if you head into her save cave, sometimes she can be seen playing her Nintendo 64. And you'll hear the theme for Peach's Castle in the background for Mario 64. This is just prime advertising right here. Sometime after the events of Donkey Kong Country 3, Wrinkly dies. Yeah, Rare actually had the balls to do this. In Donkey Kong 64, Wrinkly appears as a ghost and once again provides hints to our heroes to help them track down golden bananas in the game. But funny enough, Nintendo committed to this decision because every Wrinkly appearance from that point on still has her as a ghost. She's even a playable racer in Donkey Kong Barrel Blast for the Nintendo Wii. But before we move on, I'll refer to a little interesting fact from her Smash Brothers profile. Wrinkly first appeared as director of Kong College, where she provided game hints. Did you know King K. Rool was also a student of hers? And here he is making violent robots and weapons of mass destruction. What were you teaching him, Wrinkly? Mythological hero Achilles. Not accept that. Okay. This is Swanky Kong. Introduced in Diddy's Conquest, Swanky is the host of a game show he calls Swanky's Bonus Bonanza. If Diddy and Dixie answer his questions correctly, they can net some extra lives on their grueling adventure to save Donkey Kong. I always thought this was DK in disguise, but since he's kidnapped in this moment, it wouldn't make too much sense. He returns in Donkey Kong Country 3 in a circus tent known as Swanky's Sideshow, where Dixie and Diddy can pay coins to join throwing contests against Cranky. If they win, Swanky gives away prizes like banana and bear coins. So back in the day on Rare's website, I had to use the Wayback Machine for this, they give a little insight into Swanky here, stating that he has aimed for a career in showbiz since being bitten by the game show bug further back than he can remember. His original bonus Bonanza trivia quiz proved popular, but led to allegations of favoritism regarding Dixie and Diddy, prompting Swanky to branch out and tour the surrounding lands with a new sideshow featuring a triumphant Cranky as a defending champion. Despite his love for competition, Swanky is a generous soul, and true to tradition, 
never lets anyone walk away empty-handed. And even though we haven't seen Swanky much since Donkey Kong Country 3, the Game Boy Advance remake, he gets a couple of scenes in the Super Mario Bros. movie as a denizen of the Jungle Kingdom, which would be his first notable appearance in 17 years. I have to appreciate the little backstory Rare gave him in the past though. That's a thumbs up for me. This is Uncle Kong. I actually had no idea who this was at first, and that's because this character was exclusive to the Famitsu strategy guide for Donkey Kong Country 2. So technically, he's a Japan exclusive. He has a red jacket and a similar tie to DK, just with the letters UK on it, and he provides the players with various hints within the strategy guide. Helpful, right? Well, at the very end of this guide, he reveals that he's actually not a part of the Kong family and is just some guy who runs a banana stall in Osaka. Technically not a Kong, but his trickery earned him a spot on this list. Kitty Kong shares the spotlight with Dixie Kong in Donkey Kong Country 3, serving as the powerhouse between the two. He's the youngest Kong of the bunch and is revealed to be the cousin of Dixie. So before the start of the game, Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong are kidnapped to power a robot named Chaos, created by K. Rule. And during her search, Dixie asks Funky to help her locate DK and Diddy, who suggests that she should take Kitty Kong along with her to help, who is in Funky's shop chewing on a tire. There's not much else to say about Kitty aside from his strength and being a baby, so I'll end his segment on this little fact. In Japan, his name is Dinky Kong, one of the names they originally considered giving Diddy Kong before Rare's legal team advised them to change it for unknown reasons. It's good to see that name getting used somewhere in the world though. Kitty Kong can also be spotted in the Super Mario Brazas movie if you look hard enough racing in that cart scene, which would also be his first appearance in 17 years. So that covers each and every Kong from the Donkey Kong Country trilogy. Kind of. Everyone, I give you Cranky Kong. What is that? This is an enemy in the first Donkey Kong Country, and while not much is known about this terrifying thing, the instructions booklet describes it as a Kong reject orangutan. Rejected or not, I have to include this guy on our list. This is an interesting Kong because I'm not even sure if he's in league with the Kremlings or just mad at the other Kongs. In the Nintendo Power Player's Guide for Donkey Kong Country, it says, quote, that Mankey Kong is really mad, probably because he was never accepted as part of the Kong group. The word Mankey seems to be derived from the words mangy and skanky, and it's certainly befitting for such an unsightly ape, end quote. Give us a Mankey redemption arc, Nintendo. By the way, remember the Game Boy printer accessory from back in the day that allowed you to print cool stickers and other artwork from some of these games? Well, with the Game Boy Color version of Donkey Kong Country, you can print out your very own Mankey sticker. I have no idea why it's for the letter J, but yikes. Now that is every Kong from the Donkey Kong Country trilogy. But before I move on to the DK64 crew, there were a few Kongs that were exclusive to the Donkey Kong Country television series. The first is Bluster Kong, who runs Congo Bongo Island's barrel factory known as Bluster Barrel Works. Technically, his mother is the owner, but she doesn't appear in the show and has no name to report. So Bluster is meant to serve as an unlikable recurring character that's always flirting with Candy Kong. So while I wouldn't necessarily call him a friend of the other Kongs, he doesn't serve as the enemy either. But I have to mention his alter ego, Leo Luster, that appears in the episode Hunka Hunka Burning Bluster. That's what you do when you're faced with an irresistible force. Bluster decides to mix a ton of different hair tonics together when he realizes his hair is starting to fall out, and this ends up transforming him into Leo Luster, a smooth-talking alter ego that has ridiculous hair. Strangely enough, they show Candy beginning to fall for him, but the transformation is only temporary, and by the end of this episode, Bluster changes back permanently. Baby Kong appears in the episode Ape Fu Young, with Donkey Kong accidentally drinking a Ute serum that belongs to Cranky. He becomes a baby version of himself, so technically this isn't a different character from DK. But I'm bringing this up because in a later episode called Baby Kong Blues, Baby Kong reappears as a separate character from DK, who is being babysat by Candy and Dixie. There's no explanation here, so I'm not going to try and theorize. And it's not stated who the parents are of the baby, but he's basically introduced to drive conflict within this episode, getting kidnapped by K. Rule, who expresses interest in raising Baby Kong as his heir. Eddie the Mean Old Yeti is another recurring character that's considered a Kong since it's basically Donkey Kong with white fur. He first appears in the episode Barrel Barrel, Who's Got the Barrel, where Donkey and Diddy Kong have to head into the White Mountains to retrieve their lost crystal coconut, which is in Eddie's possession. And of course, like everything else in this show, it leads into a song. Say, Eddie, how about a deal? Five for the barrel, it's a bargain. It's a steal. Steal? No, but here's the catch. Give 
give us the barrel and we'll give you a match. Finally, we have Kung Fu from the episode Kung Fu. This Kong is hired by King K. Rule to fight Diddy Kong in a contest called the Annual Donkey Kong Challenge. This whole contest is basically organized to keep Donkey Kong on his toes, and it consists of a mind challenge, heart challenge, and the body challenge. And Kong Fu is actually victorious in the mind and body challenges, but chooses to forfeit the entire Kong test after finding out K. Rule was mocking him behind his back. In my opinion, most of these exclusive Kongs serve as minor plot devices for the television show, Maybe excluding Bluster Kong, but I guess Japan found Bluster interesting enough to have a cameo in Super Mario Kun. There's even a whole Donkey Kong gag manga series published by Shogakukan based on the animated series, and I'm still surprised this show had any relevance overseas aside from France, of course. He's bigger, faster, and stronger too. He's the first member of the DK crew. Ah, uh, yeah, it's time to introduce everyone to the DK crew. These next few Kongs were newly introduced in Donkey Kong 64, all possessing different abilities that helped to diversify Donkey Kong's first fully 3D game. The story opens with King K. Rool getting ready to begin his next attempt of conquering the DK Isles. And Donkey Kong's friends are all kidnapped, so you play with DK at first to release the other members of the crew one by one before they become playable. So let's go over them in order of the DK rap. First up is Tiny Kong, who is the younger sister of Dixie Kong. Instead of a ponytail, Tiny Kong is rocking pigtails which she can use to attack enemies and add a little extra distance to her jumps. In Donkey Kong 64, she's the fastest Kong of the bunch, but as a consequence has the weakest physical abilities in the group. She can learn a skill in game called Mini Monkey from Cranky's Lab, allowing her to shrink in size and gain access to small openings throughout the game. Some of her early concept art is drastically different from her final design, depicting a monkey with a fez and a vest. In fact, this just looks like a totally different character altogether. Abu, no! But the game's character designer at Rare, Mark Stevenson, was asked on Twitter why Dixie was excluded in favor of Tiny. And his response was, quote, Long time ago, can't recall exactly. I guess we just love creating new Kongs. I would say it would be because we wanted a character that fitted with the shrinking ability. Tiny Kong would make a few cameos in games after this, like the Game Boy Advance remakes of Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3, and would go on to get a complete redesign with a more teenage look when she was added as one of the racers in Diddy Kong Racing DS. And while she's a playable character in other spin-off titles like Donkey Kong Barrel Blast and Mario Super Sluggers, this was the last time we'd see Tiny Kong, making it 15 years since her last appearance. Speaking of neglected, meet Lanky Kong. I strongly believe this is a relative of the shunned Manky Kong, because not only do their names rhyme, but they're both orangutans. And as his name suggests, Lanky has the longest reach of the DK crew, allowing him to hit enemies from a further distance with his attacks. On the old Rare website, they mentioned that Lanky joined the DK crew from a distant branch of the family. Lanky's something of a wild card, a gangly, loping orangutan whose long arms work particularly well in the creme bashing department. Funny enough, Cranky describes him in a similar light in the Donkey Kong 64 instruction booklet saying, A newcomer to the Kong clan and the joker of the pack. I haven't a clue who he's related to, must be a distant cousin or something. Nintendo. If you truly want to make a new DK game, have all the orangutans rise up in an all-out war against the Kongs. Then make Lanky betray the DK crew at the end, serving as a double agent for Mankey, the main antagonist of your next game. Rare left all the clues behind for you, just do it. Anyway, Lanky is somewhat underutilized, and while there's some concept art of him that shows he would have appeared in the cancelled Donkey Kong Racing game, I think this is another Kong that has fallen to the wayside. Aside from being a playable racer in Donkey Kong Barrel Blast back in 2007, Lanky hasn't made any major appearances since then. Last in the DK crew is Chunky Kong, the burliest of the group. In Donkey Kong 64, he has the ability to lift and toss boulders, but is also the slowest on the team. Chunky is also the brother of Kitty Kong and a cousin to Dixie and Tiny Kong. Much like Kitty, there's not really much to say about Chunky here. He's received even less attention than Lanky and Tiny over the years, only appearing in a cameo for one of the funky challenges in Donkey Kong Country 3, the Game Boy Advance remake. But if it's any consolation, he does appear in the Super Mario Brazas movie, cheering for Donkey Kong in the crowd besides Diddy and Dixie. The new members of the DK crew would technically be the last set of Kongs that were created and designed by Rare. In 2002, Microsoft purchased Rare, which would put an end to their era in regards to Donkey Kong's story. 
But there was a scrap sequel to Diddy Kong Racing for the Game Boy Advance, known as Diddy Kong Pilot, that Rare was developing prior to their acquisition. It was never officially released, or rather it was repurposed into a game called Banjo Pilot instead. But there is yet another Kong within the prototypes of Diddy Kong Pilot. In a very early build of the game, there's a scrap Kong in the character select lineup wearing a straw hat and some overalls. Thanks to an anonymous ex-Rare employee that released some additional details in 2010, we know this character was going to be named Redneck Kong. Cool. The employee has said, quote, The hillbilly was known as Redneck Kong and was a very short-lived idea from the designer of the project. Sometime during that time, the screenshot was obviously captured. So yeah, this Kong was essentially dead on arrival, but it's cool that it got leaked to the public. The Donkey Kong franchise from that point on went through a bit of an experimental phase with Nintendo creating the rhythm game series Donkey Konga, a puzzle-based spin-off known as the DK series, and the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series, the spiritual successor to Donkey Kong 94. But there is one interesting game that brought some platforming elements back and introduced a new set of Kongs, this time serving as antagonists. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the GameCube, which released in 2005. And I shit you not, this is the story from the original instructions booklet. Pound anything that gets in DK's way as he conquers the kingdoms and becomes the king of the jungle lands. That's it. So the story may be simple, but I have to mention how Nintendo promoted this game. They sent out around 50 people dressed in gorilla outfits holding DK bongos to run in the Los Angeles Marathon. And Nintendo has gone on to say that the participants of the marathon were encouraging and cheering the gorillas on. Can you imagine you train all year for this marathon and you have a pack of gorillas running beside you? Anyway, props to the people that powered through this event wearing those suits. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat does introduce five new Kongs that serve as the main bosses that aim to impede Donkey Kong's conquest. Dread Kong is the first and is the king of Banana Kingdom. And funny enough, they went with the name Rasta Kong for the European release. The second boss is Karate Kong, King of Pineapple Kingdom. His name in Japan and some European languages is Kong Fu. And whether this is a throwback to our boy over here from the animated series or a coincidence is anyone's guess. He's followed up by Ninja Kong, ruler of Durian Kingdom and the third boss of the game. And though his name is Bushido Kong in Japan, I also find it funny that they went with the name Kong Fu for the Italian translation. People really seem to love that pun. Sumo Kong is the fourth boss of the game and leader of the Starfruit Kingdom, and for some reason, they fight on an asteroid in space. Not like Donkey Kong hasn't taken his fight to space before, though. Or was this cranky? And DK's final fight in this game is with Ghastly King, or as they call him in Japan, Final Kong. And unfortunately, there's no backstory for these Kongs, which is a little disappointing as I find their designs pretty interesting. There was a Wii re-release for this game that added more of an expanded story into the manuals, saying that all of this started when the peace of the jungle was disrupted by a rampaging pack of wild baddies. So in this expanded story, these bosses suddenly appear and just laid claim to all of these kingdoms, which kind of changes the original interpretation of Donkey Kong just challenging the leaders of these kingdoms to become king of the jungle. Personally, I prefer the narrative of Donkey Kong just waking up and wanting all the smoke that day. So this game ends with Donkey Kong pummeling the crap out of Final Kong and all the leaders of the kingdom concede defeat, as DK becomes the official king of the jungle. I thought King Kong was king of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> So that's more or less every Kong from the DK series, but there's some honorable mentions that make an appearance outside of the traditional Donkey Kong games. Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo has these enemies called Gorillas, as in Gorilla Warfare, that can be encountered in the forest maze, and they heavily resemble Donkey Kong himself. Their Japanese name is also pretty interesting, Dosoki Yungu, which when you say it out loud doesn't make much sense, but there's a clever pun on the spelling of the name as they swapped out two katakana characters from the spelling of Donkey Kongu and replaced them with similar looking characters which gives you Dosoki Yungu instead. Now in battle, when you use Malo's special technique Psychopath, this allows the players to read the enemy's mind. And in the case of Gorilla, he says, quote, Don't confuse me with someone else. This Kong is Bink, a living Kong skeleton. He's a crew member of the SS Chocola in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga for the Game Boy Advance. The SS Chocola is explored by the Mario Brothers within the events of the game, but plot twist, they discover that the ship sank a very long time ago. All the sailors on board are now undead skeletons. 
Think hosts a barrel mini game, which must be completed by the brothers to obtain a membership card to get further into the ship. And I guess since it involves barrels, having a Kong skeleton be the host was a nice little joke established by the dev team. The name Bink is pronounced Binky in Japan, which makes the correlation between him and Donkey a little bit more clear. Unfortunately, in the 3DS remake, the model was completely changed to match the other crewmates. Kind of an odd choice, not really sure why they'd choose to do this. Now in the Mario vs Donkey Kong series, several Robot Kongs are introduced as enemies, and I guess it's assumed that DK is creating these robots to stop Mario in these games, majority of them being in Mario vs Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis. I guess DK is a little smarter than we give him credit for. Rabbit Kong! Is this thing a Kong or a rabbit? Or both? Well this guy was introduced as an enemy in Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle for the Nintendo Switch, and becomes the main antagonist for the Donkey Kong Adventure expansion that released later on. Rabbit Kong is defeated in the main story in a comical way by Mario and his friends. So after this defeat, Rabbit Kong wants revenge, and the DK expansion follows Donkey Kong, Rabbit Peach, and Rabbit Cranky who work together to defeat Rabbit Kong. He gets quite the glow up here at some point in this story, upgrading to Mega Rabbit Kong, a corrupted version of himself that serves as the final boss of the expansion. I really gotta get around to finishing this game and the sequel. Finally, Uki Kongs. Aww. And I was debating whether or not to leave this part in, but this is a cool piece of trivia, so let's show them some love. Uki Kongs are enemies from Yoshi's Crafted World for the Nintendo Switch, and they're beefier versions of Ukikis, hence Uki Kongs. But the history of this enemy goes all the way back to 1994. Apparently, a similar version of the Ukikis was planned for the original Yoshi's Island game, but remain unused. This enemy was internally named Boss Monkey, complete with a barrel throwing animation and a tie. Look familiar? It's a shame this one went unused, but shout out to the cutting room floor for digging this one up. Now with the Kongs introduced as citizens of the Jungle Kingdom in the Super Mario Bros. movie, I see a lot of potential for some of the Kongs I named in this video to make a reappearance. Now this is still speculation for rumors at this point, but it's said that a Donkey Kong spin-off movie was being planned by Nintendo and Illumination, and if that's the case, Kongs that never truly got time in the spotlight like Candy, Chunky, Tiny, and Lanky can be reintroduced with a fresh coat of paint. This also leaves the floor open to brand new Kongs as well, as we see tons of generic Kongs in the audience during Mario and Donkey Kong's fight scene in the movie. So whatever is next for this franchise, I'd be more than happy to make an update video to cover future revelations. Leave your favorite Kong in the comments below and I'll catch you next time. As always, be safe. The Prophet has spoken.